Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about how you're going to be taking notes. Um, you obviously can also take them in other ways, but you are going to be handing this sheet into me. So I want to make sure that you understand it. So the purpose of having you use this format for taking notes is a lot of times I find that students, when they're reading, you're just rewriting what you're reading, which one, doesn't really mean that you're processing it and that you're learning it. And two, when you go back to study those notes, it doesn't end up being really effective or you end up taking like 15 pages of notes on 20 pages of reading, which again is not effective. So there is a lot of reading in this course. And part of what I want you to learn to do through this note taking is to take concise notes that are going to be easy and helpful for you to study from. So this is the general idea. Um, you are welcome to print this sheet out if you want to. You can also just do it um, in a Google Doc. You can do it on a piece of notebook paper and just write central idea details under it, sentence that follows. So you don't have to do it on this exact sheet if you don't want to. So the central idea, for the most part in your reading, your central idea is going to be that big, bold main heading. So your central idea for your first reading, where you're reading pages 2 through 12, the first central idea would be art history in the 21st century. Okay, so you're putting down what your central idea is. Then underneath your central idea, you're putting some details that really connect back to that central idea, but you're not writing tons and tons of information. So here are some details that I jotted down, and they're not necessarily right or wrong details. We don't have to have the exact same thing, but since this is probably the first time you've taken notes in this format, I want to make sure you understand what you're doing. So a couple of details that I wrote down. Um, we're talking about what is considered art and what the fact that what art historians study is always changing. Um, another detail are the questions that art historians ask. Another detail are common words that art historians use, okay? So then my sentence summary from that, which is what I would be putting right in here, um, and I would probably tweak this a little bit, but this is the first sentence that I ended up writing down. So art historians work to determine what, um, sorry, I can't even read my writing. Art historians work to determine what is art, which is always changing. They use a preset of questions and vocabulary to discuss and determine what is and isn't art. So I think I actually would get rid of, I'm gonna change that as we're here. And I'm gonna say, my summary sentence is art. Um, what is and isn't art is always changing. Art historians use a preset of questions and vocab to discuss and determine what is and isn't art, okay? So it should be a one sentence summary. And then your next central idea is your next bold topic. So I really felt like in page two through 13, there was really just one central idea that we were gonna focus on. Um, then jumping into the next part of your reading, which is pages 15 to 23, um, a central idea is Paleolithic art. Um, another central idea that I pulled out from that reading is Neolithic art. And then you're putting details under those, and again, your sentences. So by the end of your reading for the week, you're going to put together this little review. Um, and you really don't even have to fill these two parts out. This is just a basic how you would start writing a topic sentence. So in Gardner's Art Through the Ages, chapter one by blah, 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 um, then you're gonna just put your sentences together and now you have a paragraph. So a couple reasons that this is helpful is it's making you actually process what you're reading. You're not just copying down what you're reading. You're forming it into your own sentences. And two, when you go back to study and look through your notes, you're going to have a really nice and neat, simple couple sentence paragraph summary 
of the important parts of what you just read. And then you can kind of look over that as you're studying and see, oh, yeah, I really remember that. Oh my gosh, no, I don't remember that. And then open your book and get into more detail. So for the first three weeks of this class, you are going to be required to take notes in this fashion and turn them in. After that point, um, I will not continue to require you to turn your notes in. However, I highly recommend that you continue to use this format. There is a lot of research behind this um, that students do much, much better on test if they do this type of note taking. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to. Um, don't worry about you know, don't get hung up on if you're not positive, if you're choosing the right central idea or if you're choosing the correct details. Um, it's if I feel like you're way off base, um, I'm just going to help you out. This is more just uh, there's not a particularly right or wrong answer, but really helping you to process what you're actually reading.